So this reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah, um, this is taken from what is often called Deutero-Isaiah, the second part of Isaiah, which um, the first part is before they're, uh, they're in the Babylonian captivity and Isaiah is saying, change your life, change your life, change your life, because otherwise something bad's going to happen. Then something bad happens. And so then they're in uh, uh, exile for 70 years. And uh, I talked a little bit yesterday about King Cyrus, who is then the one that God said is going to come and conquer Babylon and then bring all the people back to their own places. He would have the temple rebuilt and, and Jerusalem rebuilt and so that they would then be faithful to him because they're saying, ooh, this guy's good. We, we like him. And so God is saying that I'm doing this. So this is that part where he's saying, okay, we're bringing you back. We're bringing you back. We're bringing you back. And um, he's, this is restoration. Raise a glad cry, you barren one who did not bear. Break forth in jubilant song, you who were not in labor. Saying, More numerous are the children of the deserted wife than the children of one her who has a husband, says the Lord. See, I'm taking you back and I'm going to make you fruitful. I'm going to make you fruitful. And it talks about, you know, the tent getting uh, bigger and bigger. Saying, you, you will go back and you will... You will not just uh, implode, you will expand and become greater and greater. You shall not be put to shame. You need not blush. You shall not be disgraced. The shame of your youth shall not be forgotten. That the Lord is saying, I am taking you back to myself. And then, for those of you who think I'm crazy, when I say that the summary of the Bible is God wants to marry us. Here we have it clearly. For he who has become your husband is your maker. His name is the Lord of hosts. He who, is your hus who has become your husband is your maker. God loves his people so intimately, so tenderly. He's calling us back to his heart. Now, it talks a little bit about how, you know, for a brief moment I abandoned you. <laughs> this should be very helpful for us. What was that? Seventy years. A brief moment. That's most of our lifetime. Certainly more than mine. A lot longer than Fong so far. That uh, uh, <laughs> 70 years is a brief moment for the Lord. He said, for 70 years, I, for, for a brief moment, I abandoned you. Not that God wanted to abandon his people, but they had abandoned him. They had sinned. They had sinned constantly. Generation after generation going after idols. Finally, he says, I need to bring you back. I need to correct you. And this time away will be what brings you back to my heart. And even in that, he did not abandon them, but they felt abandoned because they had no temple. They had no land. God says, okay, now I'm going to bring you back to your own land. I will call you back. I will call you back. A wife married in your youth, then cast off, says the Lord, but a brief moment I abandon you, but now with great tenderness, I take you back to myself. Yes, I had an outburst of wrath. For a moment, I hid my face from you. But with enduring love, I take pity on you. And that, to the best of my knowledge, as I was looking through, trying to figure this out, for someone who doesn't actually know Hebrew, um, I, I believe, it seems, from my looking at it, that that word enduring love, that love there, is the word hesed in, in uh, Hebrew. And that's like Psalm 136 where you say, give thanks to the Lord for he is good for his hesed endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods for his hesed endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords for his hesed over and over and over again. His hesed. What is that hesed? It's, uh, sometimes it's translated love, sometimes it's translated mercy, but it's, it's basically zeal for covenant relationship. Zeal for covenant fidelity. That God is saying that my love for you, my zeal for covenant fidelity will let endure forever. And what is that covenant fidelity? What is a covenant? A covenant is an exchange of persons. A contract is an exchange of goods or things. Uh, goods or services. A, a covenant is an exchange of persons. I will be your God and you will be my people. A husband and wife exchange themselves. They say, I give myself to you. I receive you to me. That is a covenant. This God who wants to marry his people. 
says, I will be faithful to my covenant to you. And even in the Babylonian exile, the Babylonian captivity, even in that time, God was faithful, saying, I want to draw you back to myself. And like Hosea saying, come back to me, come back to me with all your heart, come back to me. Here is the Lord saying, I am calling you to myself. I am faithful. Not only faithful, I am zealous for relationship with you. Though the mountains leave their place and the hills be shaken, my chesed, my zeal for covenant fidelity shall never leave you. Nor my covenant of peace be shaken, says the Lord, who has mercy on you. This God continuing reaching, continually reaching out, saying, I will be faithful to you. I will be faithful to you. And I think about, in my own life, my own struggles, my own sins, my own habits, and saying, there are times when I just feel absolutely uh, loathsome to Almighty God. And He keeps saying, I am faithful to you. I am zealous for this covenant fidelity that I've called you to myself and by our baptisms. We have been called, what? Sons and daughters of Almighty God. And in that, He's also wedded our souls to Him. How great is His love for us. And even when it seems He's distant, it's His way of drawing us back to Himself. Going back to the Ignatian spiritual rules, and I don't remember which rule it is, but it, it's that you are invited to remember the reasons, to think about the reasons why God allows us to fall into desolation. And there are three reasons. First is because of our faults, because of our sins. And usually that's where we end up and that's where we stop and say, well, I'm in this terrible place because, I, uh, because of my sins. But it's that way of saying, okay, the Lord's saying, correct yourself, turn back to me. But it's not just uh, our sins that he allows us to go into that desolation. It's also so that we can see how, how weak we are and how much we need God. It's a, in a moment to humble us, to say, yes, Lord, I need you. And also it's that time for us to be able to say, okay, I need to surrender to him because he has to do it, not me. And the Lord says, there are times when it looks like I've abandoned you. It looks like you're in emptiness, you're in desolation, you're, you're in discouragement or even despair. And he says, but I've never abandoned you. I'm giving you this time only so that you can grow, so that you can turn back to me, so you can come back to my heart, so that you may realize how much you need me. And so give your life over constantly and explicitly and totally to me. May that chesed of the Lord, that zeal for covenant fidelity, strengthen us, especially when we're discouraged or despondent, that we may say, okay, yes, the Lord is faithful to me. Help me, Lord, to be faithful to you.